watching, you're watching, you're watching You're watching, you're watching, you're watching You're watching, you're watching, you're watching You're watching What up, guys? Chris Kale from the rock and roll band Five Finger Death Punch over here at Hellfest, right here on Loud TV. Wonderful. This is actually our second interview. Last time it was also at Hellfest. Very nice. Very nice. How, how many years ago now? Maybe three or four. Okay, so right before the whole pandemic. Yeah. Very cool. So, yeah, have you been the, the pandemic for you? It was good. Uh, you know, definitely as, as difficult as the pandemic was for a lot of people, we are one of those bands that got right back to work uh, automatically. Uh, we rallied around each other. We all started kind of writing. Every single individual person was like, hey, you know, F8 came out like in March, right when the whole pandemic was, uh, uh, everybody was quarantined and put in the house. We we're like, what do we do? And we're like, just keep on going, yeah. And it was uh, it was nice to have that therapeutic purge of being able to write the new album, um, and also not be rushed at all. We often find ourselves in between, like you'll do tour into recording, into video shoot, into photo shoot, into another tour. So this time we were just like, you know what? We got all the time in the world, and uh, we used it. And this album is uh, everybody says it. We mean it. The best, the best one so far. So far, I said that means more is coming. Uh, I've watched the, the video with uh, I think uh, Zoltan. Uh, he, he, he makes some sports. It was uh, Jiu Jitsu, right? Oh yeah, yeah. And he. He wrestled uh, yep, Ivan? Yep, Ivan, uh, Ivan snuck up on him to, to say, hey, I, we, we got our, our 15th number one in a row. Got that judo toss right over the hip. Uh, he is a, uh, Zoltan's a black belt in judo, and it's just one of those things. It's just, it's a natural inclination. If somebody comes up over you, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it seems that it, it, it was like a funny thing. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> it's maybe uh, something something symptomatic for the band. It, it's mm. it's a better better wave for the band, you know. It definitely, very much so. You know, uh, Zoltan has talked about uh, you know sometimes you just got to do things to keep the band moving forward and keep you know. Uh, spirits high and energy high and my god with Andy and Charlie in here now fresh blood they're both incredibly talented my god uh, just the shredders out of both of them I knew I knew Andy was going to be incredible uh, when he was doing the champagne solo and the very first time that he ever played it in a rehearsal there is a uh, echo that's on the original Andy didn't know that there was an echo effect on there played the whole thing without an echo pedal I was like my god I think, Andy, you're doing just fine, sir. Same with Charlie. Charlie's just like a machine back there. He's got a, uh, a doctorate in rhythm and uh, highly intelligent and just the personalities in this band and the way things are working. Um, uh, going along with the album title, Afterlife. You know, we've, we had this thing before and that part of the band is no longer there. So this is a whole new life after what we were doing before. And just the spirits are awesome. The, the whole pandemic, as terrible was, as it was, it gave everybody a chance to kind of breathe. And really, for me specifically, it gave me a whole new appreciation for everything. Um, I didn't realize that I had the attachment to being Chris Kale from Death Punch until Death Punch was no longer there for me to be a part of because everything was taken away. You couldn't do anything for two years. And uh, it, it really made me appreciate it. And then coming back out here to Hellfest today, uh, I got a chance to go see Gate Creeper, good friends of mine from uh, Phoenix, Arizona. Awesome watching those dudes. Uh, Frank Carter and the Rattlesnakes blew me away. Uh, if you can hear it right now, I don't know. Offspring's out there right now. So it's just been awesome getting back out here. And, and what a way to get back into the swing of things than uh, doing the European festival run with all these wonderful bands. It's like a European band camp again. It's nice. So it seems that you're, you're enjoy life, right? Very much so. Oh, yeah. So many things happen, like individually, collectively, as a band, on a personal level, on a business level. Just, man, everything, everything happens for a reason. And sometimes when those things are happening, you don't realize 
the bigger picture, you're focused narrowly on the, the things that you had expected to happen. Once those things don't happen, you're like, ah, oh, what do we do? What do we do? You know what you do? You just relax. You go with the flow. You allow the universe to kind of go through you. And that's where we are right now. Everybody's in a really good place and just, just happy to be here. <laughs> it seems that you, you, when you are not on tour, you like to, to visit. So like uh, the plane or the, uh, not the... Uh, yeah, the, the countryside? Oh, yeah, yeah. I love traveling. That's one of the best things about this is uh, this band has taken me all around the world, places I never would have been to um, were it not for playing rock and roll, you know? Uh, and to be able to hop on a motorcycle back in the States, go to like Bryce Canyon, Zion National Park, there's so many things out there. And uh, I, I definitely took full advantage of uh, the lockdown to get the hell out and see everything. <laughs> I actually went to, uh, what was it? Arches National Park in Utah over in the States. And every other time I've been there, it's been packed absolutely crazy. I went there in May of 2020. I think I might have seen 20 people in the park the entire time, over three days. It was amazing. Being able to get out there and see in full nature without all the chaos. Again, just a big reset on everything and, and unique opportunities to really connect and and reflect and just you know look at us now look how look how damn happy I am right now can you see that people damn happy looking like this this damn happy <laughs> uh, and you're quite happy because there's also a new album right yes there is oh yeah again with uh, Kevin. Yes, with Kevin Cherko, we recorded it back at the hideout in uh, in Las Vegas, as as per usual. It's uh, he is definitely the sixth member of Death Punch, uh, able to corral all of us and harness the ideas uh, individually into the one collective unit that is Five Finger Death Punch. And I have a song on this record that I wrote the music for. It's called uh, Gold Gutter. On there, I wrote uh, quite a few songs over the break. Um, went through a uh, breakup in May, I think, of 2020. Had that whole therapeutic purge, put it all into music, and, and got a song on uh, the new record, which I'm incredibly happy about. My, like, I love the record, but the breakdown in the song is my favorite breakdown of the record. So this Although I am a little biased. <laughs> so this is your very first song? Probably. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, collectively, it's a bit. It's been uh, over the years. The live thing, you know, I'm backing up Ivan doing vocals on there, uh, but uh, I had been uh, not exactly sober for many years. And then once I got sober, I remember one of the first things I was scared about was, oh, I'm not going to be able to be creative. I'm not going to be able to write. And then I was like, hold on, you haven't written anything in like four years. What the hell are you worried about? As soon as I got sober, everything, again, talk about the flow in the universe. It was really flowing through me and took full advantage of being home. My God, I was playing guitar for like six, eight hours a day probably and just slamming through songs. And I think I wrote 14 total. One's on the record right now, and uh, fingers crossed that after Afterlife, maybe some more Chris Kale records on there. That's up to you guys. <laughs> so, yeah, Afterlife uh, is the, the name of the, the album. Oh, yeah. Um, because I, I couldn't uh, listen to the album. Okay. Not yet. I got it on the phone right now. Ah! <laughs> so, uh, yeah, could you describe it? Uh, the two, the, the first... Uh, two songs mm -hmm. released yet yeah. are really different. Yeah, yes. And so, how could you describe this? Uh, you know, it's it's. It's one of those things where we've been doing this for a long time. This is our ninth record now. So uh, we do what we do and we do it well. Obviously, if we got that many people out here at Hellfest that are wanting to see us. Uh, we're doing things right uh, in the eyes of the people and in the eyes of us as well. You know, it's, it's, it's one of those things where we have kind of gone with our own intuition and continue to grow as musicians. And just being in such a good place right now. Um, yeah, everything flowed on this on this record. Just uh, a, a nice cohesion of all the talents in this band coming together and doing this new record. Um, you're going to get stuff that you expect from Death Punch on there. Uh, there's a song called Times Like These on the record that is going to be a monster. There's there's probably four or five monsters on this thing. That's uh, I think we got 15 number ones in a row right now. I'm going to go ahead and say it. I'm going for, let's call it 18. 18 in a row. Um, judging from the other songs that we have that are coming out off of this record. So, yeah, I'm, I live in Vegas and I'm a gamble man. Put your money on 18. <laughs> uh, what about the, the lyrics? Each time I read the uh, Ivan lyrics, you know, 
quite, you know, straight to the point. Mm -hmm. You know where he goes, and it's very sometimes poetic, and uh, you know, it's uh, everyone can relate to to these lyrics, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I think he is. He's one of the few singers that can make it, you know. Oh yeah, well, just wait till you hear the whole new record. Um, as good as he has been in the past, man, just his ideas, his creativity, his the flow, the Zen state that he's in right now. Um, just reflecting on, you know, how far we've come. We're five, we're a band called Five Finger Death Punch. That name alone should have cursed us from from not playing headlining Hellfest and stuff like that to doing you know just normal clubs and whatnot but somehow we found life after the name of five finger death punch and continue to be moving forward and one of those big things that has allowed us to become who we've become is ivan moody his his lyrics his melodies his ideas um his ability to really wear his emotions on his sleeve the whole time um and you know, we're all kind of blue collar dudes who grew up um, with uh, real life experiences and we put all of that into the music and uh, it, luckily it's something that resonates with a whole lot of people. You know, anybody can write a complicated, you know, mathematical equation of a song, um, but to be able to write something that connects with the amount of people and really makes a, a difference in people's lives, you know, um, you get all the time, oh, you know, you, you've you saved us from, you know, you, you saved us, you've done this, you've done this. No, we didn't do shit. We might have been the soundtrack for all that stuff. But you, you personally did all that stuff. Uh, we're honored and, and blessed and privileged to be part of that healing process for all those people. Uh, and a lot of it has to do with just how Ivan writes and just his ability to take what he's going through in life, putting it down on the uh, pen and paper or computer, however he does it at that point. And, um, and then putting that into the songs and it's 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 working for us yeah very very proud of this record yeah i actually pr proud of this band in general uh all of us individually collectively it's uh i can't say it enough it's a new death punch <laughs> uh what you, you were talking uh, about your uh sobriety oh yeah uh i think it's quite typical uh maybe in europe Maybe we, we don't have the honesty mm -hmm. to say uh, we are uh, uh, helpful uh, ness mm -hmm. no and you think I think in the states uh, you yeah you say yeah I'm sober now for a year two years and yep but what's what's the the problem you know and uh, uh, about yeah alcohol or drugs uh, is it um, USS uh, Stuff or? I don't really know what it is. I do. I do know that, you know, um, <clears throat> one of my theories is that in the states, um, alcohol is kind of taboo until you're 21. You know, it's very. You know, they have they have the the religious dominance over there that you're like you can't do this, you can't do that, uh, and uh, kind of a puritanical kind of thing going on over there. Here in Europe, though, it's part of the culture. You know, you got well, wine with dinner. You have a beer. Um, it's it's just a different outlook on alcohol, mainly over here. I don't know about as far as drugs. I haven't dabbled too much in that over here in Europe. Did my own fair share in the states, which brought me to all that. <laughs> but um, it was actually funny. I was looking for uh, AA meetings over here because I always hit meetings when I'm over here. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it's crazy living in Las Vegas. The number of meetings that are available one every hour I mean several every hour and then I was in what Dusseldorf and what was the other city I was looking in Berlin and there was like two or three in a day but with our travel schedule <laughs> wasn't able to fit one of those meetings in so I just did a couple of online things but yeah it's just uh, I don't even know I don't know where that is or what what the difference is I, all I can say is from my own personal experience that uh, I, I'm grateful that I put all that stuff down uh, have the support and the um, the camaraderie with that sort of community and and love speaking freely about it as well big strong tough dude alpha male like me talking about you know problems gives hope to other strong hard-headed dudes to be able to open up and and look at their own lives as well that's what i hope anyway yeah all i can do is just me if that's an example for you guys that's cool too
Last question. Yeah. You, where will you tour uh, for, for this tour? Worldwide. Yeah. We, uh, it's, I don't even know what month it is right now. It's been so crazy. Is it July? June. Says, see, I don't even know what the hell month it is right now. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. When the pandemic's going on, you kind of lose, uh, kind of lose track of time, and uh, time is, is relative. And uh, yeah, it doesn't it doesn't make sense. So I do know that we're doing all this European touring right now, doing a bunch of festivals. We're doing some off dates with um, Megadeth and Fire from the Gods, and then we go back to the states. Uh, we haven't announced the second leg of. The U.S. stuff, but uh, that's coming too. I do know that we are busy from about right now all the way through. I want to say December 17th. So yeah, we are going to be busy. Yeah, got a lot of time to make up. Uh, everyone has been out there chomping at the bit. We love, we appreciate all that, and uh, we want to get back out there as much as you want to see us get back out there. So I promise you, Death Punch is coming. <laughs>